the threat. This week... Invasion. In ten seconds, we will bring you an important announcement from London. Flash, Supreme Headquarters, Allied Expeditionary Command. Under the command of General Eisenhower, Allied naval forces, supported by strong air forces, began landing operations this morning on the northern coast of France. This is the story behind the invasion news. It begins in London with a telephone ringing in a darkened apartment. European general manager of United Press was driving to Macmillan Hall in London, things began to happen at the New York offices of UP. The official German news agency, DNB, says at 12.43 a.m. that the entire coast between La Havre and Cherbourg is involved in what is claimed as an Allied invasion. What do you make of it? Uh, I can't tell. Might be a German propaganda trick, it might not. Uh, put it on the main trunk. Play up the rumor angle. Okay. Uh, and don't forget to add... There is no Allied confirmation. No Allied confirmation. The German DNB news agency claims that six heavy warships and 20 Allied destroyers are lying before the Seine estuary off the coast of France. There is no Allied confirmation. No Allied confirmation. No Allied confirmation. <laughs> During that flurry of German rumors, Virgil Pinkley and his assistant, Edward Beatty, hurried to staff headquarters in London. Farmers were throbbing overhead like the rumble of distant elevated trains. American military police, wearing white helmets, gloves, and leggings, escorted the two UP men to a large room where fellow correspondents were seated. Oh, that's really interesting story. Something I've been waiting for. All right, gentlemen, your attention, please. You all have observed and no doubt read the piece of paper placed at the table before you. That is invasion communique number one. You may release it to the entire world in exactly five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go! No confirmation, no confirmation. What's the matter with London anyway? Listen, kid, you've got one thing to learn. The U.P. is not verifying any invasion reports, false or otherwise, until they're substantiated by Allied headquarters. Chief, Chief, this yeah. just came in. Yeah. Break it up! All wires. Flash. London, under the command of General Eisenhower, Allied naval forces, supported by strong air forces, began landing operations this morning on the northern coast of France. you guys. Now, this is what we've been waiting for. We'll be over the target in five minutes, and if you ever scored a bullseye, now's the time. Did you ever see so many planes in your life? The sky's black with them, and not a single Jerry in sight. Say, Frank, did that correspondent get aboard? Yes, sir. Carly Small of the United Press. He's with me. Oh, howdy, Carly. How do you sell? Things broke so fast, never had a chance to make it formal. Glad to have you with us, Small. Thanks. Glad to be here. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Huh? But that's about what it's for. <laughs> yes, you're right. Coming in on the target, sir. All right, you guys. Now, remember... Remember what the chief told us. We've got a particular job to do, and we're going to do it. Right? Go set it, sir. Now, here we go. Get set, everybody, and give them all we got. Watch out for the flag. The hell with the flag. Get that coastal fortification. Let him have it. Bombs away. Nice going, boy. Now, let's dust him off. Look at those Hades run.
Urgent to United Press New York by Collie Small. More than 2,300 American and British heavy bombers teamed up in a shattering zero-hour bombardment of northern France, sending an estimated 7,000 tons of bombs crashing on the network of German gun emplacements raiding the invasion coast. It was the greatest single attack launched against a single objective in the history of aerial warfare, and the battered Luftwaffe took the beating without putting a plane into the skies. The powerful Allied fleet moving ahead of the invasion armada... Of course I remember you. You're the Odisha of the United Press. That's right, Admiral. You came along in the bombing of the Tirpitz, didn't you? Yes, sir. But this is the biggest show I ever expect to cover. Nothing but ships as far as the eye can see. Battle wagons, cruisers, destroyers, corvettes, LCT. The mightiest fleet ever assembled anywhere at any time in the world, Mr. Odisha. We have upwards of 4,000 ships, together with several thousand smaller craft. Torpedoes! All right, shut up! Train those machine guns to starboard. Stand by with depth charges. Why the machine guns, Admiral? Slow the torpedoes. It's our only chance. Depth charges will do the rest. Gun position, three to bridge. Torpedo wing to starboard. Correct. There they are. Two of them. Torpedo track. Follow them. Starboard bow. Fire. Blend it. Over with the ash cans. There they go. Coming in on range, sir. Listen. German coastal batteries are opening up. Right, Mr. Disher. This is what we've been waiting for. Captain Ellison. Aye, sir. Bombardment will start at exactly 0400. It is now 0258. Stand by for general alarm. Dick watch, all ships. Stand by for general alarm. Ten seconds to go. Stand by. Five seconds. Sound general quarters. All hands, man your battle station. Man your battle station. Notify the fleet to fire when ready, Captain. Aye, sir. I believe they are ready, sir. And the order is fire. Urgent to United Press New York by Leo Disher. The Allied Navy poured tons of hot steel on the invasion coast of Normandy early today. The big Navy shells burst with terrific force, sending out red sheets of flame which subsided in billows of mushrooming dirt and smoke. The Germans failed in their attempt to break up the fleet with U-boats and coastal fortifications. Upwards of 4,000 ships took part in the action. Behind this mighty battle fleet, thousands of landing craft, each carrying 120 men with weapons and small tanks, sped toward the invasion shore. We're taking part of the budget. All right, then, get set. Hey, where's that United Press correspondent? Hey, Dick McMillan. Yeah? Move up to the front of the boat, Mac. You right. stick with me. Boy, what a way to spend the night. Nothing like it. All right, men. Before we get out, don't forget to duck and don't bunch up. Yeah. Right out. Come on, they can't stop it. <laughs> Urgent to United Press New York by Richard C. McMillan. Allied troops have breached the invasion coast of Europe and are storming ashore on the beaches. Each man was a walking arsenal. Some carried their Garand rifles, 80 rounds of ammunition and three grenades. Others bore grenade-launching Springfields. Others had Browning automatics. There were bazookas, flamethrowers, TNT pole charges, and all the other equipment necessary to reduce the enemy's fortified positions. Germans opened a heavy fire when our men were about 50 yards offshore. But most of the spearhead reached the beaches, shouting the battle cry. Come on, they can't stop it! Come on, Sarge, let's close it up! Come on, fellas, they can't stop it! They can't stop it! Come on! Urgent to United Press, New York, by Virgil Pinkley. The $100 billion Allied invasion of Europe has just passed its first test to the battle cry of, They Can't Stop Us. These four words from an unknown American sergeant were uttered as the greatest military operation of history began. They transformed the coast of northern France into a roaring, flaming, crashing inferno. The battle of battles has finally been joined. But the job has only begun. We shall have victory, but only at the cost of blood and sweat courage, endurance, and the highest military skill.
have just heard the United Press Invasion Staff's dramatic eyewitness story of the Allied invasion of northern France. Other correspondents the world over are prepared to bring you other first-hand accounts. We will present another in this series soon. Be sure to listen. Meanwhile, remember to look for United Press dispatches in your favorite newspaper. Listen for United Press news on the air. It is your guarantee of the world's best coverage of the world's biggest news.